Welcome to Ruinberg. Greetings and welcome to another excellent World of Tanks video. I had another great game in my Panzer 38H, and I realized this would be another awesome teaching video for players to learn how to play the 38H to the maximum of their ability. And this will help you gain more commander experience points than you have been gained because it's going to show you some really good ideas that are quite important. So it would be really helpful if you can leave a like to this video to help spread the word to even more 38H players that are currently seeing whatever my videos generally get seen. So let's get on to the lesson. Alright, we are now in Ruinberg. As you can see, three tier threes, and then the rest of these guys, the other 12, are going to be tier twos like the 38H. Now what I'm doing, you can see me right here, Hotel 4. I decided I'm going to stay in the city and try to use the buildings to help shield me from enemy fire. Because 38H, as you know, does not move agile or quickly. So we want to get positions, hopefully, where we can get sniper-type shots. Here's a great one right there. Let's drill this guy. We'll just take whatever shots we can get. Have we lost a shot on that guy? Let's go look for this other guy. There we go. That's fine. These guys are crossing our field of vision, so we shoot them when we can. They get out of vision, move on to another target. And this is one of the things that 38H does really well. Is that it's a short range sniper. It's quite effective. Got that guy. Got that other guy too. Now we're going to boink this guy. Now this is an alignment aim error in the program. I'm not misaligning this aim. I'm purposely aiming it. But it looks like I'm aiming high. So that's just a glitch in the program. Alright. So... There we go. Now there's two guys down here. As you can see, that guy's way out there, and I'm drilling him too. There's nobody else that's a problem, that's the R35. So I want to drill him in this turret if I can. But you can damage him with a lower body on the side, since he's turned battleship profile. Now the artillery is firing, the artillery is firing from my left, so the wall will protect me. This is where the buildings are quite useful. Pay attention to where artillery should be from the beginning of the game, which is at his base, and stay on the street. You see where I'm close to the wall on the northern side in this yellow box. That means the artillery cannot fire over that wall and hit me. His shot does not have that kind of arc. That would be a mortar shot, and he's got a flatter artillery shot. Something that comes in about, you know, 45 or 55 degrees. Not steep enough to, to come down the and come down the angle and cross the wall or the, of the side of the building to get. So I'm safe from artillery right here. Is why I can sit here and snipe. Them. Now we're crushing these guys big time. That's just from playing smart. I'm not doing anything crazy. Sometimes you're gonna get, you're gonna get lucky like this, and with the, the smart move, it's just gonna be safe. And sometimes it scores, and sometimes it doesn't. Or this time it's scoring big time. So that's one of the things you're not always gonna be able to get in Ruinberg and score. The other team will play better, perhaps. The traffic pattern changes. 
So there's the artillery. It's on now. There you are, buddy. So the best way to fight this artillery, I'm slow. I just gotta hope he's not really a good, you know, anticipator of where I'm gonna be. My whopping 18 kilometers per hour. I'm going 90 degrees away from him. You don't wanna travel directly towards the artillery, you make his shots straight shots. You know, straight at you, and if you just aim a little in front of you and drill you almost every time. So you want to go, basically I was moving 90 degrees compared to his, his shot line. So you want to take at least a 45, and in that case I'm so slow, 90 degrees. I don't need to get any close, I was close enough. Now there's just one guy left, and this is a PlayStation T1 E6. You know, tier 2 light tank with a gun that cuts through this tank like butter if he's using premium rounds. So, it's a tough matchup. But if you know how to play it right, you have, you have a 50 50 chance. Maybe more, depending on how good he is. Or damaged. If he's heavily damaged, he doesn't have much chance here. You know, it doesn't matter how good he is. His damage was just too, too vicious. Now here, I'm going to manually aim this. I don't use the lock-on. The lock-on will never work. But I was manually aiming in front of his tank as he tried to rotate around me. That's how I got him. So I shot it, you know, what looked to be about 18 to 24 inches in front of his tank, and his tank will move into the shot. That's how you kill this guy if he's circling you on manual aim because your turret rotation is plenty fast enough. It's not fast enough if you use lock on. Victory. All right. I had an awesome game here. You know, it's a tier three match and I was able to pull out seven kills just annihilating their team because I was using just basic smart city maneuvers. It wasn't super genius stuff. Anyone can do this, but you just got to be paying attention to the stuff I was telling you. All right, as you can see, we're back in the garage. Now, if you look underneath my Nazi zombie, whose name is Ravenous Rolf, he has a star there. That means I unlocked the next skill. Now let's go see the end of game screen and I'll show you what it's like. All right. Now, I always have to be careful to tell you guys. I use only premium rounds. The reason why is it gives me the greatest kill chances. And that helps me get you know, seven kill games or more, what have you. I'm willing to pay the minus 56,000 silver. Boom, got the next level, as you saw right there. So, I lose money. Now, you can go 50-50 on premium or regular if you want to. It's up to you. The weakness of mixing regular ammo and premium ammo is that you're going to have bounced shots, and if you want to have the mega game, you know, where you do like over 2,000 damage, you're going to need premiums to do it. So, I don't, I don't want to make this, when I'm playing the match, I want to focus on killing the guys and helping my team. I don't want to focus on the math angle, even though that's well within my purview I graduated with a degree in mathematics. Okay, it's not really a problem, but why go through the hassle when you don't have to? I use all premiums. If they bounce, well, there's nothing you could do. Well, I should have used a premium. I did use a premium, okay? So that's the thing. I'm willing to trade silver for commander points. 
and it's, which is what I did. 56,000 lost silver. whoop de doo I make that back in one game in Cold War. But look at that commander bonus. Commander points, 44,800. That is a nasty game. That's because I killed seven guys, had 1850 damage. It was awesome. All right, now let's go check out the medals. This is the good part. Ta-da! That is the Ace Mastery Badge. Now, this is Tuesday. The new, new week started about, I don't know, six hours ago, five, six hours ago. So, this is one of the few times you'll see a 38H Ace Mastery Badge happen at below 2,000 damage because it resets every week. So we got the Ace Badge. I already have the Ace Badge, but I'm just want to show it to you, explain it to you. And, you know, Tuesday mornings are the greatest time to get an Ace Badge in a tank if you're trying to get one and you're close, but you haven't been able to make it. Cool-headed. Survive at least 10 ricochets. Okay, yeah, that's a bonus. I don't count those. I don't really care. Pascucci's Medal. That's for killing the artillery. So that was a great one. I knew I was going to get this medal when I killed him. Or if I killed him. Demolition Expert. Kill a guy by blowing up his ammo and causing him to explode. Fantastic. This is next one's Fire for Effect. Do more damage on your hit points. High Caliber, which is a gold wreath. Duelist with the two swords. Do damage, you know, to two guys that cause damage to your vehicle. I mean, kill two guys that cause damage to your vehicle. At the bottom, you see the top gun for killing six or more. And the bruiser for knocking out enemy crew and or modules. The big one is the ace badge. And the second big one is the Pascucci. If you don't have them. Now, Pascucci's metal looks cool, fine, whatever. But you're really, really the one you're looking for is the ace badge if you don't have it. Because it's not easy to get. What do we have in scoreboard? Scoreboard, now remember, there were three tier threes in this match. Wow, they didn't do very well. Mediocre. Mediocre, again, one kill each. And the artillery got two kills with almost, you know, almost no damage to speak of. They weren't that great. They did not have headsets. That's why I don't know what they were doing. I wasn't paying attention to them. They don't have a headset. I can't help you is what I tell them. I'm doing my business, okay? My job is really simple. My job is to help my team, number one. Number two, score as much as I can while I'm doing job number one, okay? I'd help my team if they have a headset. You know, they're getting attacked or about to be attacked, artillery, what have you. Now, I'm slower than dirt, so there's a limit on the helping I can do, but I will do that. On the other side, that was the final guy in the PlayStation E6. So, I killed him, but he was already heavily damaged from his combat. So, he got all this, basically, not from me. And as I tell people, and I mention it every time I get a chance, what makes you effective in a game sometimes it's the number of guys you kill all right yes I killed seven guys and that that's the headline you know what they call the marquee stat you know you'd put that you know the marquee means the movie theater you know display of you know like what movie is on like Star Wars um, or you know Avengers Infinity War Okay, the marquee is seven kills, you know, 38H, seven kills, um, and that is good. Sometimes that's the big deal, but more often than not, it's not how many you kill, it's which guys. And this is the perfect example of that. Which guys I killed? Well, I didn't pay attention. We'll get to the list in a second. The only one I know is that I killed their top scorer. I also killed their artillery as one of the guys I killed. Now, he did okay. He didn't have a great game. And part of that's because I killed him. All right? But he, he wasn't having a great game. He was 
somewhat effective. He did make a kill. I don't know about the rest of them, but let's go look. We, what we can do is go back here on efficiency report. Now, let's see what happened. Yeah, I killed the PlayStation E6, Ray. Ah, Gray Bat. That's, he's another high score, so it's important that I killed him. I'm sorry, did I kill him? Yeah, you destroyed this enemy. That's Gray Bat. All right. That's a robot. I destroyed pizza for Jeff. Potato Farmer is another robot. I killed him. Artillery, we already know I killed him. Brooding Banshee, I killed him. Sergeant Overdrive, these are both robots, actually. Killed him. Okay, so killed a bunch of robots and three, I killed four robots and three people. Let's go look at their team again. Now, there you go. I killed number one, I killed number four. He's one of the robots I killed. He's one of the robots killed. So in the set top seven players, I killed four of those seven. Plus, I also killed the artillery. And the other guys are down, you know, towards the bottom. Brooding Banshee and Sergeant Overdrive. They don't really... Those are padding the stat kills, all right? The big kill. That was the final one of the game. Their top score. Got their number four score, all right? And what that means is those guys stopped scoring when I killed them. So I got number one, number four. I got number six and number seven. That's why we won so easily because I was killing important guys. So it's important to kill seven guys. You'll take it any time. I know I will. But pay attention. If you're killing important guys, that sometimes in the game is what wins you the game. Now somebody else, you know, comes up and, you know, would have but maybe four kills. But I killed two, you know, if, if, if a guy comes up and has four kills, he's MVP by the computer, all right? The computer would re register his points and go, yeah, this guy's MVP, killed four guys, did more damage, what have you. But if you ended up killing one and two, and that's all you killed, yeah, this is one of those things to go, anybody who understands the game will go, uh, well, you, the guy who killed the two guys, is the real MVP. You're the reason you won the game. So try to learn why you're winning games. That will help you. But basically, do the best you can to help your team. That's my goal. Even though it looks like, well, yeah, you're just trying to go score points. Well, no, I am. But you're going to score more if you win the game, number one. Help your team win. That means you're winning the game. And then score after that. And so all those things come together in a game like this. Okay, so now we're back to the garage. And we unlocked the next skill for this commander. So let's put the skill on the commander. Click over to commanders. Oops, let's uh, do this. Do this again. All right. So now we're back in the garage, and we're here to work on that commander. So we got that star. Let's click over to commanders and add our skill. Okay. Nazi zombie skills. All right. When I build this commander, quick learner plus ten percent. Rapid reload does more damage per minute. Next thing I put on there is armor angling. This gives you defensive blocking of damage. Hugely important. When you don't have it, once you've had it on a tank in a commander, and then if you put a commander or have have it missing in the commander, you'll notice it. you'll feel like Swiss cheese. This is very important because it blocks some damage. And I blocked some damage in that game. After that, number four, we go for born leader this gives us increased vision this gives us lower reload time this gives us slightly better accuracy slightly better turret rotation it helps you all around and it drops what happens is it'll drop my reload time from 2.02 .02 seconds to two seconds flat 
which by itself isn't a big deal, but it's all the things combined. Because when I have the born leader and the rapid reload, my reload is now 2.0 seconds is the fastest reload you could possibly have. I have the maximum, well actually the minimum reload time. I have the maximum accuracy as well once I add this. Now on the 38H, I don't have to add this steady aim now. I'm going to add it because what I'm going to do is build other commanders. All right. Now, if I want to continue with the 38H, I wouldn't add the steady aim here because you saw me. My accuracy on this tank is very good. And the 38H is a good short range sniper without adding steady aim. But I am going to add steady aim because I'm going to swap this guy out to another commander and take his skills and build that one up. So let's do that. We're going to put the steady aim here. Now normally, if I'm not going to add the steady aim, I'm probably going to put either the binoculars or I'm going to add, if it's for a different tank, I'll be adding the snapshot to give me increased stability during rotation of my turret. What I want to do on the 38H, the last thing I want to put on my tank before I swap the skills is the steady aim. So it goes to another tank, it's going to have maximum aim accuracy. The steady, uh, the Not every tank has great accuracy, but the 38H has very good accuracy. Some of them have great accuracy, some of them don't. So now we got this guy done. And we're going to swap this guy, these five skills, to another guy and then use him to build up the new guy skills. So here we go. We're going to take this. Now I'm going to come over here. Let me show you my commanders. These are my one skill commanders. I don't have any. That's good. They've been built up. I got two skill commanders, which is Pegasus. I don't want to work on him. I got three skill commanders. This is a guy that's in one of my Cold War tanks. But I have other four I have another four skill commander. I already knew this. That's why I'm coming here. So what I want to do is swap these skills. And now my four skill commander is my 38H commander. And as you can see right here, ta-da! This is where I was before I earned the next skill, which you just saw. Again, quick learner, rapid reload, armor angling, born leader. Then I'll unlock another skill. And if I feel like making a six or seven skill guy here, it just depends on what I feel like doing. Then I'll add something else and not the steady aim. The steady aim I will put in there last and then swap it out, which I did. So we're going to go back here and look at these commanders. There we go. Again, no ones. I got one, two, which is Pegasus. And I got one, three. And I have one, four, but that's in my 38H. And these are my fives. So all these guys you see here is like 33 fives. This is the guy I just swapped out. Now he's unassigned. I can assign him to a tank because he's ready to go medium, heavy. It doesn't matter. He's He's got all the, the basic skills that you need to score well in whatever tank. So that's the point for me of 38H is to build commanders like this, then stick them in a tank and go, hey, you know, whatever. Because as you can see, look at these tanks here. There's a five, These are all five skill commanders. Chinukai, Alpine Tiger, the Stubbs, M41 Artillery, Tier 5 American, the Kaiju. This, this is a Super Pershing, but this is the American paint job Freedom version. Honor T-28E, Russian tank with a three-star commander. You know, Vanquisher, British Tier 4, Orochi King Tiger, which is, you know, Tier 8 Tiger Tank, 
with uh, General Rommel, I'm sorry, Otto Carius, etc., etc. You see all these different things. These are all tier fives. These are solid, ready to go. So this is how you do it step by step. And build these commanders, get them ready, shove them in a tank, and then let's rock. I guess I should show you one more thing. Down the road, those guys that you saw become, you know, elite nine skill commanders like these are. Now these are like my main butt kicker tanks. You know, Cold War, Cold War. This is my awesome tier eight German Holdenhund light tank. Cold War, Cold War, Cold War, Cold War. Tier 10 French artillery. Cold War. Cold War, Cold War, Cold War. You, you, you see a, a, a trend going here. Now this is the guy that's my top weasel tank, but I'm using my weasel tank as a commander builder. So I have an eight skill commander in there, but this is my weasel commander which is Cold War. This is my tier 10 Iron Army tank, Arnold Schwarzenegger, because, come on. Cold War, T-A-N-K. You know, a good goofy tank. Cold War, Cold War, again, you know, you see the deal. Another awesome tier 8 10-shot autoloader, T-41E1 light tank. Snake bite, super fast. Death Chariot, this is for Halloween. A32 Russian, awesome tank. You get the general drift here. This is another, this is my tier nine Russian artillery. One of these days I'll make it into a 10, just haven't got around to it. Anyway, so I use that 38H to build commanders like you saw. And eventually these are what you get. We work our way up the ranks and you know, I use the I start off with the 38H. Alright. Let's go here. Alright. Now let me show you. What I do is I start off with the 38H. Usually run it up to about five skills, which you saw today. Then what I do in general, you could do this in the British Sexton, or you could do this. Okay, actually, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. My preference is American Sexton, but British Sexton works exactly the same. Now, this is a five skill guy I put in this tank. So, I will play this and build up commanders. I enjoy playing artillery. So, this is like Captain America. I can do this all day. All right. So this is this is not the fastest way to build a commander. This is the funnest way for me to build a commander. Is to take a 5, make it a 6, a 7 or an 8 just by running artillery missions. That's fun for me. Some people sniper missions, you can do that. That's fantastic. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. You know, another one I do is this one. See this guy right here? Yes, I have a nine skill guy that I use for that. I just took him out and put him in a different tank because my scoring in this tank is through the roof. So it's a perfect eight skill turning into nine skill commander. That's what this guy does, this FZ-101. I mean, FV-101. So this is another example of a commander building tank. Again, I'm like Captain America, I could do this all day. No problem at all. So everybody's different. There's all different ways for you to build commanders, but the 38H is the fastest way to build them, especially in the lower ranks. I've mentioned this before. I'm going to mention it again because you never know who's watching this video for the first time. The 38H, as you can see here on the far right, you'll see that blue times four. That's a times four commander booster. Let me show it to you. Now there's some information on boosters that will help you here. 
I use the times four boosters to get this guy up to stage five or you know five skills now I could use why don't I use a time, times ten do well or a times eight and I'll explain this to you or the times sixes all right what happened was they changed the setup you know for I don't know a month or so they had the 38h they changed the 38h from the basic the basic scenario for a match on the 38h okay the setup for the mines map used to be like this seven on seven that was your standard most probable 38h map that you'll play well six eight weeks ago whenever they did it i don't remember 10 weeks ago they sw they switched it from seven on seven on mines to full 15 on 15 and so on those matches i would get randomly some matches where it's just me and my 38h and 14 robots that's my favorite so in those when i put the times eight commander on there i have a video video the last time i did it when i killed 12 guys like 2400 or 2500 damage i got 105,000 commander points because i was using times eights in my 38h and that ruinberg match that you saw would have been a monster game if i would have had times eight but i didn't have times eight the reason why is if i get a seven on seven like this now this was a really good game i got thirty-five thousand, which was fantastic for a times four but if you double that for times eight it's like seventy thousand. that's okay i mean that's a good score not great for a times eight the problem is most of the time i was getting lesser than five kills for example uh, you know, I'm probably average about a thousand damage, sometimes 900. Okay, and so it's squandering my times eight bonus. You're better off running two times four games to get the points you're going to get from one times eight game if you're going to have these seven on sevens show up like this. That's the difference. So, what I want to do is I want to save my times sixes, times eights, and times tens for stuff like the toy tank event at Christmas time oh man that thing is a hundred thousand plus in a times eight and you could even get more than that if you catch a break in the middle of the night but you gotta find the matches or if you're once you're aware of them like I am I want to use those times six times eight times tens where they're going to maximize my point scoring rather than having, you know, a solidish game. Like this was a really good game, 35,000. So I got like 70,000. And that's really solid. I'm not complaining. The problem is there are other games where it'll be, you know, 40,000. Well, that's not special. I did almost 40 here in a times four rather than spending a times eight and having, you know, a different game with a traffic pattern wasn't as good and you're getting you know you're squandering your advantage so you got to be careful and selective and one of the things you can do especially if you're early on you know once you, I would say do it like this when you're learning 38h use no boot no boosters okay and then once you gain some confidence and you're having good ideas I get these from those daily war chests times two go with times two and work your way up or whatever you have you know maybe you have times two two point two five or whatever but these are all good you know just to start out you don't want to jump into the big boys okay then the operation from last week we got some times sixes you want to maximize these for when you're going to score, hopefully, but also you need to be careful 
and know how to score in the 38 eggs. So use those lower ones to build yourself up to where you're more confident and you're having better scoring games before you start going to the big boys because you're not going to just roll up, oh, here, let me throw it times eight, and I'm going to go kill ten guys. It does happen, for sure. But it's, it's like everything else. You have to work your way up the ladder. And I don't want you to waste your big times six, times eight, or what have you, when you should be using your times twos to build yourself. You want to build your skills up. You don't want to go crazy and just jump out there, go, oh, here's the times eight game. Go out there, kill one guy, and then you get killed, and you're like, well, that was stupid. Because it was stupid. Okay, and so I'm telling you in advance not to do that. Work your way up. When I went into the Ruinberg, now I'm optimistic that I'm going to have a good game. Or at least I'm going to try to do everything to give me a good game. But you never know. Guys might be really working together on the other team. That makes it harder. So you don't know. There's no guarantees. So you do what's going to work in general. Sometimes you're going to have a Ruinberg MVP like I showed you. Sometimes you're going to have one where you're, you know, you score one kill or two kills, you know, and you get annihilated because a tier three guy rolls up on you that just completely outclasses your tank. Or multiple guys kill you. Two or three guys on one, there's nothing you can do. It's not a question of, well, you're garbage because it's not you being garbage. They just got you. So you got to be careful. You want to be familiar and experience the different scenarios that happen so you're more likely to be successful when you do use the larger commander boosters. They're huge when you score, but the disappointment is also huge if you don't score for whoever's fault, your fault, somebody else's fault. Or, you know, artillery makes a fantastic shot. Boom, one shot, you're dead. Well, I'll tell you that you know, the M7 Priest and that uh, German Vesp artilleries, they will one-shot kill a 38H. Guy makes the best shot of his, of his day. Boom on you. He's not going to do that again the entire day. That doesn't help you. You're already dead. Okay? So you got to be, you got to think ahead. And if you think ahead, you're going to score better. And when you score better, you're going to be way happier. So you do want to do something similar to what, what you saw me do in this game. But it's a process. It's not just a slit switch. You turn it, flick the switch, boom, oh, you're, you're an MVP winner. It doesn't work that way. But you can do it, and that's why I have all these different videos. Every time I have a really good 38H game when I'm building commanders, I want to show people so they can look at it. You never know who's looking at the video and the video triggers the key thing that they needed to learn and then bingo it's like night and day their next games are now fantastic stuff so that's what I'm doing here to give you this opportunity so I hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you found this information helpful it would be very helpful for me if you could just leave a like which is free which is good for you tell your friends the 38H you can get it for free from the store. Go look for the World of Warships and World of Tanks 2-pack Joint Forces. There's a 10 megabyte download. You'll get the free 38H and a free garage slot. And then, bing, bang, boom, you can set yours up. Oh, there's one thing I didn't do is I didn't put the setup on there. Let's go give you the setup. All right, equipment. Some things are right or wrong. Some things are chocolate or vanilla. 38H is slower than dirt, even with the traction, which matches your speed. You gotta have traction, that's a right. You gotta have the engine, that's a right. If you don't have it, you're wrong. And so it's right or wrong, right or wrong. Here is a matter of personal preference. I call it chocolate or vanilla. I have advanced optics. I have the fan for crew performance. Now remember, the crew performance fan, it does the same thing as the born leader. So 
it's like having a second bore leader. I have this in here. It makes my aim better, my reload time less, my turret rotation more, etc., etc. Okay. It also increases my vision on top of the fact that I have uh, advanced optics. Your maximum vision in this tank, as you can see, I have a 402 range. If the only thing missing that will make it better is the binoculars. The binoculars will knock it up to 432 meters, which is just devastating range visually for a tier two. But you know, you might want to put, you might want to put camouflage. It's everybody's different. You might want to put on small liner. I'm going to tell you, advanced repair system isn't that great. It's okay. You know. But it's a percentage thing, you know, it's useful a small percentage of the time. Advanced optics and improved ventilation, which is a fan, that's useful 100% of the time. That's just why I use those. Camouflage is also useful for a decent amount of time, amount of the time. So you can do this as well. Spall liner, again, to help protect you against artillery strikes. But this is my personal setup you saw how I scored in it but if you have a one if you have a setup that's a little more comfortable for you go with the comfort comfort is good now consumables again you have right and wrong and chocolate and vanilla you gotta have repair and you don't have to have it really but if you don't you're just you're messing up royal 10,000 I have Enhanced rations because once again this does the same thing as the fan and it does the same thing as the born leader and when you have all three of those together that's as good as it gets that's how I get the 402 watch this I'm gonna take this off this is gonna cause you see that uh, vision range is dropped now from 402 to 386 on the upper right hand corner so this is what happens. Look at this. We're going to show you this accuracy. Accuracy on this gun, 0.38. Okay. Now we're just going to show. Put this back on here. Enhance rations and watch what happens. Now it'll cause the numbers to automatically change. So a gun was 0.38. Now it's 0.36, which is the, the smaller the number, the less deviation. So that's better. And now. Go back to the garage, come back in. We went from 386 range to 402. This is the value you must have enhanced rations, and you see why. Tomato, tomato on this one is chocolate or vanilla. I'm going to tell you the odds are better if you use gold first aid, but legitimately you can use this if you have the skill to go with gold gasoline. This is gonna jack up your speed. Watch this, the maximum speed was 42. Now it's 44 with the gasoline, but if you get a crewman knocked out, you're in trouble. And that's what happens. So you can experiment with the uh, gasoline and see how it works, and most likely you'll come to the conclusion, for the most part, that you're better off with the first aid. However, this is chocolate or vanilla. To me, this is right or wrong, and it's right. This is right. This is a opinion. Personally, the odds will favor the safer route of first aid, but you can have great games if you use gasoline, because gasoline also jacks up your turret rotation. So let me show you this one. Turret rotation. You see it under the turret silhouette. Standard here is 53.16. We're going to put the gasoline on there. We're going to gain a 10% boost. So it's going to go to what? 58.59 with all the bonuses in there. So let's go do this. Put the gasoline in there again. One more time. So 58 and a half. You gain like over 5 degrees per second. Like I said, it's up to you. That's one of the reasons that it's great. The gasoline gives you that turret rotation. But it's already good. Let me remind you. The turret rotation you saw where I killed that PlayStation E6 guy at the very end of the match. 
I don't have gasoline. So that was my fifth. That was my uh, 53 degrees per second was easily handling his rotational speed. Okay, so that's fine. Like I said, it's an opinion whether you want to use uh, first aid or gasoline. I don't worry about losing the money because I make it all back in Cold War. Just go run whatever floats your boat. Everybody's different. So now that covers all the stuff there. So I hope you enjoyed it. Tell your friends. That way they can leave a like, possibly subscribe as well, and learn about the 38H because this is a butt kicker. So I want to thank you guys for watching the video. I hope I taught you some stuff that would help you. Hope you enjoyed that match to give you an idea of what you could possibly do yourself if you dig on the training program of 38H. Because 38H will train you to make better decisions, and better decision making will make you a better player. So look forward to seeing you guys again in another video in the future. I'm out of here.